Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is part one of a video series where I show how to create the scattered sine wave effect on an apple in Houdini 20.5. Let's start off by dropping down a geometry node. For those of you who are new to using sine and cosine functions and what they actually do, I can create a quick visualization that should hopefully help get the idea across. However, if you're already familiar with the sine and cosine functions, feel free to skip ahead a couple minutes. Let's create an add node. Add one point. Create a wrangle. A sphere. And a copy to points. Set the sphere uniform scale to 0 0.1. And then let's change the view to the right viewport. For this type of usage of sine and cosine functions within Houdini, it's helpful to think of them like this. The sine function gives you the y position of a point traveling in a circle. And the cosine function gives you the z position of a point traveling in a circle. So if you were to give the sine and cosine functions a value that grows over time, it would then provide y and z values that would give us perfect circular motion when applied to a point or object. To visualize this, let's select the attribute wrangle and we're going to edit the y position of the point. So we want to add the sine function, then let's add the frame variable and then close it out like that. So if we play this now, We'll have the sphere going up and down really quickly. So we can slow this down. All we need to do is just divide the frame by something like 10. Now, if we play this, we're going to notice an issue. It's just going to be jumping like this. And the reason that's happening is because essentially it's treating this frame variable like a integer rather than a float. So let's just add a float function around. So now, if we play that, it'll be moving up and down smoothly. So now we can do the same with cosine on the z-axis. So let's change that and change the function to cosine. Now, if I press play, the combination of sine and cosine creates this circular motion. So with that done, let's delete these nodes because we don't need them anymore. And it's great, good. Set the rows and columns to 200 each. Connect that up. Let's go back out to the perspective view and frame up on our grid. And let's change our wrangle to something more useful like sine waves. So we're actually not going to need the cosine function here so let's delete that and we also need a variable that represents the center of our sine wave so let's create a vector with center point which equals zero 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 which is basically just the origin cool so if i press play now Essentially, the whole thing will be moving up and down. So in order for us to get this wavy effect, we want to figure out how far each point is away from the origin. So to do that, let's add a distance function. Let's add the center point variable and the current point position. So it's going to figure the distance of each point from the origin. Then let's add a plus here so that it will evaluate over time. So now if I've done that right and press play we should get this cool looking sine wave effect. Let's add some more variables so that we have more control over the look. So let's add a float variable called amplitude which equals a float channel also called amplitude, like so. Then let's copy that and 
make another variable called frequency and then what we can do with these two variables let's multiply our sine wave with the frequency and let's put our entire sine function in some more parentheses and then multiply that by the amplitude so now if we create our channels we should have some more control over how things look so we can just mess around with these parameters maybe that's a bit too much up our frequency yeah so we have some control over how the thing looks so I'm going to change the values to something like this yeah that's working nicely now I want some control over the speed of the animation because at the moment it's just set at one speed and it's quite slow so let's create a time scale variable and let's also create a time offset variable So that we can offset our time, let's just add a plus sign after the dollar f and then add our time offset variable. And instead of dividing by 10, let's multiply by our time scale variable. So now if I create those channels and if I press play, we should have some control over the speed. There we go, which is nice. And then we also have control over the time offset. So we can control essentially when the animation begins. Now we want to add a way of controlling the fall off of the sine wave because at the moment it will just go on for infinity, but I want it to dissipate before the edge of the grid. So let's add a new variable called fall off distance cool. and let's add another one called fall off curve but instead of having a float channel we want a ramp we need to use the distance of our current point from the center point as our ramp position. So let's copy this here and then paste that here. Our ramp expects a value between zero and one. So let's add a fit function. And our old min would be zero and our old max would be fourth distance. And our new min would be zero and our new max would be one. And then we need to copy our fall off curve and instead of this parentheses being here let's delete that and put it after amplitude and then multiply by fall off curve awesome so now if we create our channels we should be able to control the fall off distance now at the moment looks like it's inverted so we just need to invert the curve and then if you want to, you can control the curve and make all sorts of interesting shapes. But right now I just want to select both and then convert those to Bezier. And then I think I'll change the distance to maybe like five. So we can press play and see how it looks. And at the moment, it looks like it's going the opposite direction to what I would like. I prefer for the wave to move outwards. So. All we'd need to do is just add a minus sign here. So if we press play, that should invert that. So that concludes part one of this tutorial. If you like what you've seen so far, I've added a link down below where you can find the rest of the videos. I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something new. If you'd like to leave a like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, have a good one. Bye.